Good morning and welcome to Grain TV. It's August 16, 2012. To my right is Cody Bills and I'm Brock Schimbino. The grains were slightly positive in the overnight session. It turned mixed as we headed into the middle of the day. Let's turn out a fire tip for the live quotes. Old crop corn is up 2.5. New crop is up 2 cents. Soybeans up 3 quarters of a cent on the old crop. New crop is up, or excuse me, down 5 and a quarter cents. Wheat in Chicago up 17 cents and Kansas City following along up 14 cents this morning. Well, Cody, last week we got the USDA reports. We saw some revisions made to the production sides of things. We saw yield for corn and soybeans actually reduced, but we also saw some revisions to the demand side. Um, how did that affect the export sales and what are the export sales looking like this morning? Yeah, let's take a look at the export sales. They were mostly mixed this morning. Last week we said that uh, people were going to be focusing a lot on the demand destruction here. And so let's just get right into the weekly exports. We saw 122,000 metric tons for old crop corn. That's not all that great. Corn and wheat both missed analyst expectations. Beans came in above analyst expectations. But it was a result of the new crop sales. Look at that, 924,000 metric tons that were sold for new crop. So that, that actually moved beans ahead quite a bit. Um, take a look at uh, where corn is in terms of where it needs to be to meet USDA expectations. Keep in mind that we did revise the export forecast uh, down 50 million bushels in the last WASDE report. Here you can see that we're just not able uh, to, to be uh, making these sales at the pace and we're still 20 million bushels behind uh, the pace that we need to meet the USDA expectations for 2011 and 2012. So let's look at beans here. Completely different story. We're ahead of pace, 41 million bushels. And even after the USDA revised 10 million bushels higher, we are ahead of pace. So it's great to see that for beans. I expect that we're going to end up beating the USDA's uh, estimates here, unless we see significant cancellations near the end, which I I doubt. The only thing that I would uh, maybe expect to see is some uh, some sales get rolled forward into the new marketing year. But let's take a look at the new marketing year. Beans is uh, is well ahead of pace. Where 54 percent of commitments uh, uh, are have actually been made when you look at the overall all, uh, sales that the USDA is forecasting for this uh, next crop year. So uh, we're doing well and we're well ahead of pace there as well. Sounds like we're falling a little bit behind on corn. Beans are still looking pretty strong even though we've seen high prices over the last several weeks. So I think the, the revisions that the USDA made for the export sales were pretty much in line with what we were thinking um, uh, here at uh, Grain TV. Absolutely. We're going to take a quick commercial break and when we're back we're going to talk about some ethanol and how, uh, how the observations there, if, whether or not that's in line with the demand and destruction that uh, the USDA is forecasting. Grain Hedge is more than just futures trading. Clients receive our cash grain optimizer showing spot and forward bids within 200 miles of your farm. We take into account your trucking costs to find your best selling opportunity. We provide in-depth basis mapping, historical basis and cash price charting. Every day we show you your best price and if it meets your profit goals. Contact Grain Hedge today to get started. Welcome back to Grain TV. Uh, Brock, we were going to talk a little bit about the ethanol production and uh, the stocks over there. Have we seen any sort of improvement here in the last week? Yeah, you know, we did see another improvement in the ethanol production. That's three weeks in a row we've actually seen upticks in ethanol production. This week we actually gained about a quarter of a percent over where, where we were last year at 819,000 uh, barrels per day. Versus where we were last year, we're about 9% below on production per week. So that's kind of concerning as we move forward here. Uh, but we did see those revisions in the USDA uh, um, as far as how much corn is going to go to ethanol use this next year. Stocks, on the other hand, we've seen eight of the last 11 weeks. We've seen stocks being reduced. This last week, we saw it reduced about 1%. But where we were in relation to last year, we're actually 5% above where we were last year on stocks. However, with the production increasing and with stocks being lowered, we are the implied demand for ethanol is actually quite a bit higher than what we are actually producing at this time. Something that I'd like to mention here is that we used about 87 million bushels last week um, for bushels of corn for ethanol uh, production. But where we what we need to use to meet the USDA expectations for the remainder of the year is about 105 million bushels. So we're quite a bit behind pace on that. We may see another revision in the September WASDE report uh, for ethanol production. If we take a look at some charts of where ethanol futures are in relation to what gasoline futures are doing right now, you can see right here that ethanol futures, the top uh, chart, actually rallied throughout most of the summer months, but we kind of tapered off towards the end of this summer. Uh, gasoline futures, the lower chart here, actually rallied very sharply as well throughout the remainder of the summer, and it continues to rally, whereas ethanol futures kind of tapered off here towards the end. Right now, 
gasoline futures are actually holding about a 50 cent premium over what the ethanol futures are are uh, running. So you, I think that the blenders are actually going to continue to blend ethanol at a pretty substantial rate uh, given these two price levels that we see here. Yeah, absolutely. If you take a look at uh, if you take a look at basis for for ethanol, just the basis scenario, where the premium bids are right now. Uh, you'll notice that ethanol actually they seem to be having a pretty strong spot price uh, or a spot basis, uh, but really it's it's only spot. A lot of the forward months they seem to not be as competitive as other bids out there. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with the ability to lock in margins immediately and uh, and the uncertainty going down the uh, going down into the into the future. But but one thing that's really difficult is these ethanol plants. A lot of them are going to have a difficult time uh, competing against a lot of these end users and grain processors. That's where we're seeing huge bids right now, and we're seeing very strong basis plus 55 off of the December contract for October corn. We've seen that a couple places throughout the U.S. Guys, take a demo of the Firetip trading platform. You'll also get a demo of the cash market intelligence platform that we have. It'll help you identify some of these trucking opportunities. We'd be happy to walk you through it. It can mean, um, it can mean a big difference between in your, in your bottom line at the end of the year when you can identify these selling opportunities in the cash market. So uh, give us a call, 877-472-4607, or, uh, or visit us on grainhedge.com, and we look forward to talking with you. See you tomorrow.